welcome to the joy of coding. Hello, and welcome to episode 338 of the joy of coding. My name is Mike Conley. It's so good to have you here. As usual, we're going to be hacking on some Firefox stuff today. I'm very excited for that. Let's get started. Uh, let me start by sharing my screen. All right, so this is today's agenda. It's September 13th, 2023, episode 338. A reminder, no plan survives breakfast. Today is no, uh, no, um, <laughs> case in point, I, I shall say. Uh, what I had originally planned on doing, which was to keep going back to the Windows jump list stuff, uh, we're going to put that on the side real quick because I have something else I need to quickly jump on before uh, before getting back to the jump list stuff. I'll, I'll expand on that in a second, but that is the sort of thing that can happen where, you know, I had planned on doing one thing, another thing kind of like um, jumps out at the last minute and we just kind of deal with it. Um, that's all right, you know. Uh, software development is what we're trying to capture here, like the real the real experience of writing software development for something like Firefox, and sometimes things take suddenly priority, uh, a priority event will occur, and that's what's happening today. I'll explain what's going on in a second. Um, so uh, it, the agenda that we're looking at is something that you might find useful if you want to click on links or something. Uh, you can find links to the agenda in the video description if you're watching on YouTube or diode.zone. If you're watching on Air Mozilla, check out the details section, and if you're on Twitch, check out the um, channel description down below and you can follow along. And as I uh, update and add things to the agenda, you'll see this little spinny guy spin, and then if you reload the page, you should see the, the changes manifest. So what's going on? Well, first of all, let me start by sharing a, an interesting blog post that I saw fly by that I think maybe some of you might be interested in. And that blog post has to do with a bunch of performance work that the Firefox team has been doing, uh, like the, the core performance team has been focusing on, which is, there's this benchmark called Speedometer 3 that um, you know Mozilla is collaborating with some other browser vendors on to help us all kind of like agree on what a good performance benchmark benchmark is for us all to sort of run towards. In the same way that uh, Interop was a, a project to make it so that uh, browsers are kind of heading in the same direction when it comes to like interoperability for like DOM APIs and 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 web standards and the prioritization thereof. Um, Speedometer 3 is like a similar effort, I would say, but related to performance. So unlike micro benchmarks from the past that, you know, th had questionable value when it comes to, um, you know, how much they impact real world usage, Speedometer 3 is designed to um, really measure real world modern web application usage. So that, you know, if an improvement occurs and you are, can see it in Speedometer 3, chances are you've actually improved the experience the, for real people using real web applications on the internet. And uh, so this is a, a blog post by my colleague Brian who talks about, I'm not going to read this for you, but basically it, it highlights how we were able to detect a regression after, um, it, like via Speedometer 3, we noticed when they updated the internal um, view.js test inside of Speedometer 3 from view 2 to view 3, there were performance issues. There's like suddenly big jump uh, in, in sort of the, the amount of time to run the test. And through some careful profiling, they realized that there was, you know, a room, room for improvement related to our proxies, the, the implementation of proxies, which if you're not familiar with them, there's a link here um, about proxies because apparently Vue 3 uses proxies rather than like um, other getters or something. And uh, we optimized those proxies. And so uh, around, what was it? The course of the year, yeah, Firefox has improved by about 40% on the Vue.js benchmark from work like this. That's incredible. Like great job performance team. And this uh, performance improvement will uh, be in Firefox 118. That comes out in just a few weeks. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and yeah, this makes reactivity in Vue.js applications significantly faster. We also anticipate improvements on other workloads. So there's like, if, if um, performance issues for web applications is something that you've been, um, you know, if, if Firefox has like struggled on certain web applications, try 1.18 uh, when it comes out because it might behave better now because we've made some optimizations. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing, this is the thing that I'm hoping we can uh, jump in and look at uh, instead of the uh, the jump list stuff real quick. 
And this is a, a bug related to the migration wizard. So, do you remember long ago, um, I like, I think there were a couple of episodes where we worked on the migration wizard. If you're not familiar with the migration wizard, it's this thing. It's over here. Um, you can like import things from other browsers. Um, one of the things that we've added the capability of doing is importing extensions from other browsers. And, uh, and another thing that we've um, added is the ability for uh, the, the wizard to be embedded in other contexts. In particular, it can be embedded in our onboarding page. So this is our onboarding page. Let me start, let me start right at the beginning. We can embed the migration wizard right here in the onboarding page. So we don't have to like send the user to preferences or to a different window or something. It can all happen in the page and that's great. Um, and it has the same powers uh, as, um, you know, the actual, ex like the the one over here, the, these, it has the same capabilities. Um, but we, we noticed a bug. So um, the one of our QA people noticed that one of the features that we added, which is the ability to import extensions from other browsers, this is something that we've been uh, experimenting with, and we're trying to do like a, a slow sort of controlled rollout to see whether or not you know it works properly, and um, trying to get a sense of whether or not we have our um, our mapping, uh, comprehensive mapping of like Chrome extensions to Firefox extension equivalents. Um, so we're doing this experimentally and trying to, to sort of gather information to make sure it's working as best as it can. And they noticed an issue, and I want to show you what that issue is. So when you uh, import extensions from, say, Chrome, uh, it does some work. And then, uh, oh, no matching extensions found. I might have to, like, reload. Hang on, let me start over. Let me start over. OK, let us do this. We're going to ex uh, import extensions. Okay, so it imported one of three extensions. And normally, uh, by clicking on this link here, you can like go to about add-ons. It would send you to about add-ons to this page to allow you to like finalize the extensions that were uh, were installed. And uh, And right now that's not working. When I click on this, what actually occurs is an error is thrown inside of the uh, the console. You can see here, about welcome, that's the name of this page, may not load or link to about add-ons. So that that is true. Um, and that's true for most normal web pages. Like if I go to, um, you know, example.com, and let's update this link here. About add-ons, if you're not if you're not familiar, is this page. This is the about this is one of the internal pages. And if I change the link here to be about add-ons, we get the same same restriction. Like web pages are not normally like normal web pages aren't allowed to link to most of our internal pages. I believe it's possible to link to some of them. Like it's possible maybe you can link to about support. No. How about uh, about you can probably link to about blank. Yeah. Um that's that's relatively safe. Maybe about I doubt you can go to about preferences. No. How about about uh, new tab? I'm guessing not. Yeah, no. So for most most web pages aren't allowed to do that. And that restriction is what we're running into here because about welcome is designed like a normal web page. Like it has a lot of the same um, the same characteristics of just a, a normal web page. It has some advanced characteristics, like the wizard doesn't is able to do things that a normal web page can't do, like bring bookmarks into your browser. But that's because it's embedding the wizard. And um, as part of this embedding, uh, if we inspect this, we can see that like it's just using a raw link here, and that's not good enough. You know, the um, the em embedder might have might not have the rights to actually send the user to about add-ons. And that's what's happening here. Um, if we were in, say, about preferences, and we were in here and we clicked on that link, then, yeah, absolutely, we could go to about add-ons. That's not a problem. But it's whenever we're embedded in like the, the in an environment like this where it's falling over. And so there are, 
there's a solution to this that I'm going to I'm going to try and work on during this episode, which is to do basically what we do whenever we um, do any other privileged action within within the migration wizard, which is to send a message from the wizard up to the content uh, up to the um, migration wizard parent. And that's the thing that does most of the actual work. Uh, a lot of the heavy lifting of getting migration started and getting the list of the other browsers and sending it down to the child. So uh, sending a message on click of this link and telling the parent, hey, open a, open the link. And the parent will have the rights to do that. And it will open, open the link. So that's what I'm planning on doing. Let's get started on that right now. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to uh, remove... The, my testing add-on so that I can like continue to test this. I'm going to close Nightly for now. We're going to go into our uh, definition of migration wizard, and I'm just going to get, get started here. Now, this was made quite generic and maybe too generic where, like, you know, the extension's success link is, like, there's only, there's really only one. There should only be one. Um... We've got one uh, message text anchor, and that is just this one, uh, this one here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this uh, extensions success link. Give it an ID like that, and. I'm going to update some of our some of our scripting here. So instead of selecting it every time, because it's only going to exist for one group, I'm going to say let extension success link equal progress page query selector. Uh, extension success link okay now we have uh, we have it we don't need this anymore we don't need this condition anymore um, we can we don't have to be removing the, the href anymore I don't think we're gonna use an href anymore we do want to remove the text content at the very beginning of this. Um, and I think uh, we can get rid of this. this and success and then this one okay so I believe that should still pass our tests because I think we have tests for this let's take a quick peek migration tests I think there was one for extension migration. Uh, we're going to change this to also be the extension success link. And yeah, we make sure that I don't think we want to do this anymore because it's not going to link to about add ons directly. Um, what else does? extensions success link description oh that's interesting description link text link URL hmm So I had forgotten about this. Is there a case where we send if state equals warning? If 
state equals info, info here, then we expect the link URL to be about add-ons. Okay, and if it's info, right. So I actually think we don't want this either. Info. Do you want that for the other one? Post content description message. Yeah, we want to get rid of this one. Then what I think we want to do is make sure that this runs correctly. Lock, test browser components, migration, test browser, browser extensions, migration. Let's just run that. Hello, Smurf D. Hello, Ocris. Hello, everybody. So for some, uh, I, I suspect that, um, Part of what I'm doing right now is I'm cleaning up a little bit because that link only ever pointed to about add-ons. And so um, having that kind of be set every time or cleared every time doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And we're not even using the href anymore. I think the next step actually is to add an event handler to the link. So... Um, this, uh, um, extent, maybe success link to add event listener click this dot extension success link is shadow query selector extension. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe we can put that up here. And then we don't uh, we don't need this anymore. still runs because then what I'm going to do is uh, with our click event listener we'll send a message to the parent to open about add-ons okay so that passed Target equals this dot uh, extensions success link, and I'm going to say this dot open about add-ons. Um, actually, we can probably just do this like open about add-ons, no detail, and then in the migration wizard child, uh, I think what we want is Want 
trusted true. And then we are going to um, handle it here. Case migration wizard open about add-ons. We are going to send a message. Await. I don't even need to await. I can just say this dot send async message open about add-ons. Break. Uh, and then in the parent, we're going to do hello Canada honk. So good to have you here. We're going to receive the message. And we're going to say uh, this dot open about add ons. Do we have what we need is like the, the browser that this came from? So, browsing context. Um, so, the way that we can resolve the message that we just received to the like the actor that we are the parent actor to the like browser that we got it from um, I think we can go like browser equals we can look for yeah and better element that looks right and better element This dot browsing context dot top dot embedder element. So we'll say let browser equal that, and we'll pass that, and then we will implement this method about open about add-ons. That'll be down here. Opens the about add-ons page in a new tab in the same window as uh, browser. Browser, past browser. Param, element, browser. The browser element requesting that about add-ons open, opens. And it doesn't return anything. Um, and the way we can open about add-ons, maybe there's, let's see if we can find an example of that. Open trusted Lincoln, yes. Uh, something like that, I think. Ooh, or browser open add-ons manager page by given view ID. That's what we want. Do I have to pass? Yeah, I can just like do this. Top Chrome window. a window window equals browser dot owner global uh, window dot browser open add-ons manager all right let's see if that works so let's build this and if that works we'll write a test for it and then I think we're we're done
Now that's, I'm reading a little bit more. I'm having a discussion with someone about how this should work. And uh, we might need to adjust this a little bit. But in, this should give us the, the theory. Like we've got all of the infrastructure. The, the one detail I'm trying to figure out is whether or not we open up about add-ons in the same browser or we open it up in a new tab and does that tab take foreground or is it does it stay in the background? Um, that's what I think we're currently trying to figure out. So I'm monitoring that conversation. All right, let's see what happens whenever I import everything, all the extensions, click. Nothing. Didn't get it on my property target on line twelve sixty four. What is ah fool fool? I had a single equals classic error. Uh, let me extension. Okay. I think I have to. I don't think I have to rebuild actually because this is not a pre-processed file. I don't think. So let's try this again. Yay. OK, so that works now. We open, when we click on that, we open in a, in a new tab. Uh, now, it sounds like we'll probably be opening, we actually want to open about add-ons in a background tab. So let's see if there's an option to do that in here. Untrusted link in selection target untrusted link in. What do we have here? Do, can I say where params open link in? Can I say background tab open link in? It looks, I just saw the word background fly by, so chances are yes. Background, if where equals current, where is tab, we'll load the link in a new tab. Load in back, params in background. Load in background, params force background, force foreground, false. Okay, I want in background. So let's try that. Um, so we'll say window dot open link open trusted link in. The URL is about add-ons. And one of our params is in background true. And where is tab, I believe. And let me just double check. Um, uh, what are the options that we can pass in here? Open link in. Where? Current. Tab, tab shifted, same as tab, but in background, if default is to select new tabs and vice versa, new window, save, new tab. Okay, I think we want tab. All right. All right, let's, let's try this now. Um, we're going to remove view block. Okay, that looked right. Yes, okay, confirmed. We do want it to open in the background. So we've got the behavior that we want. Great. So now that we've got this working, um, a new background, a new background tab in the same window as the past browser. So that's done. Now we just need a test. What we can do is we can augment this test. 
um, start the progress state. Um, what we should do actually in here, ooh, sorry about that, is we need to um, extension success link. We should ensure that the success link is hidden in this case. I think that's true, right? Should be hidden in the warning case. Let's run the test and see. Okay. Uh, and then we should ensure that um, let's also make sure this looks right in those different cases. Uh, let's launch storybook. But I also, after we're done this, we're going to assert um extension success link description message assert success link works oh I'm going to make this an async function because this next bit is going to be async. Let's promise. Is it at, I can never remember. Is it return or returns? Returns. Okay. Let's promise uh, resolve undefined. Resolves undefined. Is resolves? No, it's not. Returns promise. Uh, resolves when. It's like that. Resolves when. Um, self explanatory. Nothing. The assertion's complete. Um. Got a helper function here. Assert success link works. We're going to await extension success link. Try and do that here. And what we could actually do is assert success link and then we'll also pass in the description message message and then we'll have our helper function async assert success link link message um, and what we'll do is we will assert that the string matches Link matches. And then if met.
message, then we want to, oh, we actually need, We need a reference to the window. Mm. Wait for new tab. Uh, that's what we want. We want browser test utils. Wait for new tab. It's probably fine to, we're only testing the one window, so I think I'll just use the G browser global. If message let about add-ons opened equals browser test utils wait for new tab, G browser, want load is the um, string, the URL that we want to load. And then we're going to click on the link. Wait about add-ons opened. Tab equals create. And then browser test utils remove tab tab. Okay. Let's see what that does. Oh, and I also want to take a quick peek at uh, Storybook. Make sure that we look okay in our different scenarios here. Migration wizard, extension partial success, extension import failure. Whoops. Failure, success, okay, good, 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 that should be success link, yeah, okay, pretty happy with that, uh, in particular, it's hidden in the event that, uh, yeah, it's like it's a zero, a zero by zero element if there's no text in there, so that's good. All right, let's run our test now. And shut down Storybook. Um, here. Failures. Okay. Uh, is in browser found current window global is null in migration wizard parent line seventy. Whoa. Can't make this properly. And assert success link. Happen here. Current window global is null at the point where we try and send the message to open about add ons. Hmm.
Oh, wait, 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 wait. Gotta await these. Gotta await these. Yep. Yep. Pass that. Okay. Hello, Mohit Singh. Hello, hello, hello. Glad to have you here. Good. Hey, we did it, everyone. Um, all right. So let's take a look at the patch. Silence to review it, patch. Yes. Um, Yeah, I need to add documentation there. I'll do that right now. Checks that the extensions migration uh, success link has the right text content. And if the text content is non-blank, ensures that clicking on the link opens up about add-ons in a background tab. Bram. Link, link, the extensions success, extensions migration success link element, param, message, oh, string, uh, message, the expected string to appear in the link text content. If the link is not expected, to appear, this should be the empty string. Returns Thomas. Uh, that the about add-ons tab will be automatically closed before proceeding. Before proceeding. Okay. There we go. I think that's it. Let's run that test again. Do one more manual test, and then let's post it up for review. And then we can go back to our jump list stuff. This is a, this is a reverse 360 dunk, gang. All right. I do like fixing a bug quickly. All right, so let's do this again. Um, let's do it in two cases. Let's let's do our import from here. Import. Good. Okay. Um. And then uh, let's do it again. This time we'll do it from the other main entry point, which is over here. Okay, done. Feeling pretty good. Okay, feeling pretty good about that. Quick fix, best fix, agreed. Let's put this up for review. Um, all right. Bug, such and such. Uh, delegate the responsibility of opening about add-ons from the migration wizard to migration wizard parent. Martin, review this. And then, actually, I should flesh out this commit message with more of an explanation. Um, so let me preemptively commit amend. 
I should uh, I should add more. Okay. Um, originally, we had heart. Uh, we had um, had the uh, extensions migration success link work by using a normal anchor element with uh, about add-ons set as the href. This works on privileged pages like about preferences, but not for unprivileged pages like about welcome, which um, unprivileged pages are generally unable to directly link to about pages. Most about pages. Um, to uh, a, the solution here is to uh, continue to use an anchor element, but to use an event handler on it rather than a um, breath attribute, and have the um, and handler on it rather than a ref attribute and have the uh, migration wizard parent hear that click event such that uh, hear that click event and take responsibility for opening about add-ons. As part of this we're also choosing intentionally choosing to open about add-ons in a background tab uh, so that the user can continue to um, work through their onboarding flow uninterrupted. Uh, should they click on the link while on about welcome. All right. That is the commit message. Let's post it up for review. Um, let's just take a look at our patch here. Delegate responsibility. It's based on central from September 11th. That should be fine. Moz, fab, submit, tip, single. Let's go. Same is true for case no extensions are matched. Browse extensions link is now open the AML page. Yeah, it's the same link, so it should also work. Um, okay. Uh, note for QA that uh, we have uh, that with this patch we uh, also are choosing to open about add-ons in a background tab rather than to overwrite the current document we are intentionally we are also intentionally choosing this is um, okay. Ugh, submit only my new comment. Okay, so here's the patch up for review. looking through my stuff here. Oh, 
Looks right. Success link URL link text message. Description dot message. Not success. Description dot message. Oh, I can get I can get rid of this. That that is superfluous. Same with this one and this. Okay, so there's a little bit of cleanup here. Hold on. I left, there's some leftovers. Extension success link here. Run the test again. J JP as Ninja Zero says it was a meaty message. Yes, uh, I do like me a meaty commit message. Commit messages. They're they're as someone who's had to do their fair share of code archaeology, a solid commit message is very handy. It's a gift to yourself from the past to your future self. Um, because who knows, I'm in 10 years, I might look back and wonder what this patch was trying to do. And my meaty commit message might, that might help with that. Okay. Moz fab submit tips single and I'll put in a message. Uh, remove some redundant assertions in browser extension migration.js. All right, and then let's move on. All right. Uh, so. We had just gotten to a pretty interesting point during, uh, what the heck? I did not want that. Uh, an interesting point during our jump list test, um, uh, writing our jump list test. We, uh, we were getting to the point where, yeah, yeah, I wanted to write a new kind of matcher. So I've got this, this like little test um, in here that's making sure that like our one task is going through. And that's great, except that I'm using like these assertions such that if we fail, we crash rather than like reporting a failure. And I would rather we fail properly. Plus, I don't want to have to like write this sort of thing again and again and again. And so I think my the understanding that I have is that the mock framework allows us to build matchers. And that's what I want to do here as well. Um, uh, assert. Well, what am I going to call this? Uh, tasks shell link shell links equal, uh, and then uh, description descriptions. Uh, Comparing, uh, was I shell link with, what did I call these dictionaries? Uh, these things with their description definitions. generated okay and then we say okay we're gonna uh, 
return we have to return true or false to say if they match so we'll say uh, we're going to first compare the length Result. Uh, arg. Get count. And then desks is a T array, right? And that's T array. Yeah. And so I believe uh, NST array has either a get length on it or a get count on it. Ah, they're messages to yourself. If I ever put that much effort into a commit, it's for others. Oh, I mean, it's also for others. Um, you know, it's it's also possible that someone else might, might want that information as well. Um, you know, a good commit message. There's a, there's a, a writing good commit messages. Okay, so I, uh, I'm a periodic contributor to uh, to a piece of software called Review Board, and uh, where is the doc? Maybe do I have? Where is this product? Learn and explore uh, documentation. Uh, develop. I'm looking for like developer guide, user's guide. Where's our like developer stuff? Basically, there's like um, like contributing wiki. This is it. Uh, commit message. Writing good change descriptions. So here I'm gonna put a link to this. This is kind of I've I've grown to uh, adhere to this philosophy: writing good commit messages. Basically, you want to, if you can, explain what you did and why, um, because just writing like first commit, did thing, fixed such, like that's not helpful in you know in many years after you've forgotten the context of what occurred and why it occurred, you want to leave breadcrumbs and evidence so that you can more easily do code archaeology because especially for older pieces of software, code archaeology is important to understand why things are the way they are and if they still need to be the way they are. Smurfy asks, what is the MozFab message thing? So what that does is um, when I use dash M or dash dash message, it includes uh, a message to my to the other people in the review. So I, I was basically saying, okay, here's what I did in this new revision. I removed some redundant assertions, um, and so that's that's what that argument does. Okay, NST array. I believe there's a either get length or get count or length. There's just a length. I think I just saw it. Length. Yeah, like, it's probably right at the top. Length. Hang on, let's go right to the top again, and let's look for the term length. Here, here it is. Return the number of elements in the array. So that's what I want to use for the NST array. We're going to say get count. Um, if uh, count is not equal to desks dot length, return false. And 
then we're going to go through every single item for, I think I can do this, auto desk. How's this done? For auto, isn't this auto iter or auto? Yeah, auto desk desks. I think I can do that. Um, except that I want the I want the index. I do want the index. Okay, so. What's the yeah array length? We already have the count, so uint thirty two t i equals zero i less than desks length minus one i plus 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 i doesn't really matter in practice. Um, then we will get the shell link. Um, let's see here, Jenkins Builder, shell link, ref pointer, yeah, shell link, Java pointer, shell link, and then I believe we can get at the item at a particular index. And I think we do that whenever we check for removals. Um, do check for removals is we get one of these collections back. Objure. And then over here, we have an objure. Oh, right, sorry. Uh, less, I need to minus one. I is less than. All right. Is it difficult jumping between languages? Sometimes. Sometimes I realize, like, my brain will be in, like, JavaScript mode and I have to remember C rules and vice versa. Um, yeah, it is. It, but it's a little bit like jumping. Be I would imagine it's a little bit like jumping between spoken languages. I don't know if you're the person asking here is bi or trilingual or if you have you know um phrases in some other languages but i've found that like i'm not truly bilingual i can speak a little bit of french enough to be reasonably polite um and to like order food and stuff i got to exercise some of that in, in quebec recently um but uh you know you you end up having to sort of think in a different way when you're using a different language um, you know, different rules apply. So, for example, in French, you know, I have to think about the gender of certain um, nouns, which um, is is interesting. I have to think about uh, the formality of pronouns or pronouns, formality of of things like you and them and us because there are very formal ones and then there are more um there are more informal ones and and that's the sort of thing that you don't super need to care about as much in english uh this is what i want right here um so is, is it difficult it's not bad the more you do it the easier it becomes i would say um arg get at i static cast get our ad refs link uh, return 
false. And now we're going to look at the different properties of this thing. So the ones that must exist by default are the title and the path and the description. So um, We have to do a little bit of string comparison here. Let's start with the title. So the jump list builder, what does it do? We get the arguments. Whenever we create one of these things, what do we do? Is it get title, set title? Title. Set value. P title. Oh boy. P key title prop variant. That's what it is. Okay. Store the title of the app. I don't see how title could be empty, by the way. Title is required, but I guess I was just being very cautious. Um the path. The description. If there are arguments. So this is kind of like how all of this stuff works. We're gonna let's actually start with path and description, because those look easier. I don't have to do all this stuff. So um, PSL is what? PSL is a What is a PSL? It is a NSI sh or an iShell link. So let's take a quick look at the definition of an iShell link interface. Get description. That's what I want. And then there's there are two out params. But can never do that. really so this is going to be uh, this is going to be kind of new ns what is that ns string okay so let's do that can i do that with ns string ns string description uh, link get description what is the maximum showing a maximum number of characters the string return has a maximum length of info tip size systems prior. The size of the string is limited by max path. Info tip size. Maybe I can just use that. Get description. Um, do I do it like this? Info tip size. And then I want to compare. What does that return? An H result. Um, H result. HR equals that. If. Um, Failed HR or count. Is that return or true or false? Failed 
if failed false and then we're going to compare description with desks uh, the desk at this index so um, and it is of type yeah it would be a JS value, the shortcut description, desk. Okay. So we're going to get a reference. Uh, Windows shortcut, Windows jump list shortcut description. NST array. I want to see what the right way is to get the element get element at element at element at. Here we go. Let's see how many people. So yeah, I'm gonna say shortcut description desk equals uh, desks element at i if not desk false uh, description and now I'm going to compare desk m description m description dot get uh, now string comparison uh, string internal equals. So I will do uh, dot get dot equals description. If not, return false. Return true. Let's just do that for now. Let's see if this builds. Uh, it's actually not being used just yet, but I'm curious to know if it will actually just compile. And then we can worry about using it. Yeah, um, so JP Esninj0 says, my second language, I'm not very good at it and is less strict than English, but I'm aware that people have difficulties when going between languages with comp complex rules. The same should be true when then with coding languages. I, like honestly, like spoken language and programming language are it, it you all you're doing is expressing thought, and I would say that a programming language is very similar to a spoken or or written languages. It's you're expressing thought with maybe a different purpose. You're expressing thought in a way that a machine can compile, but also that that a, you know another human who um, might also be talking to machines can read and make sense of um but uh, yeah i'd say that there's there is a re definitely a relationship there uh, and you know i'm no uh cognitive scientist but uh warning what happened what happened so we got some warnings but the build was successful so that worked exception ignored Okay, that's okay, I think. That's just a warning. So that worked. So now what we can do is hopefully we can use this. So instead of saying uh, expect call times one, such and such, we'll use the same format that we used for LPCW stir EQ. 
which is we'll pass that in um, here we'll say shell links equal and then Jump list shortcut description desks uh, desks append element that'll work right think that'll work and then we'll say that and then we can get rid of this I think let's see what happens compile Danny Coleman writes, it's probably easier to code switch between programming language since they're almost all based on English words and logic that's probably true i think that's probably true i will say that like certain if you're hearing that sound that's my doorbell i have to answer the doorbell i'll be right back one moment that's my custom doorbell one moment please I'm back. Sorry about that. Someone was at the door. And uh, yeah, that's that's my custom doorbell. Um, it, it can be shocking if people aren't used to it. So what's going on here? There is, oh, right, sorry. It's, uh, it's not a pointer. Um, see here let's see how this is used out in the wild nst array selected ids selected ids dot append element okay so that should work let's try that <laughs> okay, did that I don't think that built correctly, so let's not get Yeah, okay. Let's let's get back up in here. So, a couple of warnings. Error. Call to implicitly deleted copy constructor. Oh, I might have to pass in a reference. At which point The value might end up being 
more like that. Desks. Let's see if it likes that. Yeah, one of the things that I loved about uh, the the doorbell that we got, we got a, a, a new doorbell, is that we are able to upload, it has like a bunch of built-in doorbell sounds, but you can also upload your own custom ones, and that's the one we chose. Frodo, something at the door. Um, okay, I cannot initialize a parameter type L. W stir with an R value of NS string. So that's not good enough, apparently. Okay. Can't do that. LPW stir. Uh, get description. LPW stir description. Let's see if that's. I don't know if this will work. We'll see. Come on. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Not a fan. So, with an R value of type L. Oh, okay. So, it doesn't want a reference. It wants. It's already a pointer. I see. WChart is already a pointer. That's why. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm getting pretty sick of this error message. So well. Uh, while well, we're waiting for that to compile, I'm going to It is used. I use here. What are you talking about? Hmm. Okay, so still not a fan. No member named equals in char 16 pointer t. Char 16 pointer. Oh. Um, is it something like get, oh, you know what I, it is. I'm pretty sure I don't want to get that. I'm pretty sure I just want to do this, right? Let's try that. Now what's it complaining about? Okay, different complaint. No viable conversion of, oh. Oh, so it's actually going to give me, not a point or two, but the actual description. Okay, at that point, desk will be like that then, I guess. If I can just get this to compile, even if it fails, I'll be happy to end the episode there. Because um, we're coming up on our hour and a half. Oh, come on. 
That's brutal. Invalid arg. Oh, right. That's not falsy. So. Okay. Keep going. Lazy instantiator. Fail. Use that instead. Maybe. Two oh one. I don't know. I'll deal with that later. Okay. We got it. Wait. What happened here? Did it compile? Not really. Did not compile properly. Oh, maybe it did. I'm I'm confused. Do that again, please. Hmm. Complains about that. All right. Big complaint. And the complaint is about line 50 there are no matching descriptor for the initialization note in the instantiation of member function not sure a bunch of expansion not viable, expects an R value of first argument. I don't think I fully understand. Does that mean that somehow there's so many macros that uh, I'm kind of getting confused? All right, one last chance, and then no matter what, I'm ending it. And we'll investigate and figure this out next week. <laughs> nope, still doesn't like it. Uh, it is, yeah. It, I think we were right before, but but there's more to do. Okay, we're going to have to figure this out next week. All right, well, everyone, thank you very much for watching episode 338 of The Joy of Coding. Let me know what you thought. There's a link here at the bottom of the agenda to rate the episode, and you can also use it to ask me questions or or let me know what you'd like to see more of. I'm going to put a link in the chat. Um, I read everything that comes in, so please do rate the episode, and, uh, and I'll happily read your feedback. All right, thanks, everyone, for watching episode 338. I'll hopefully see you next week. Uh, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. The joy of coding. See ya.